Hi, welcome to our fifth episode of Wikipedia Weekly, the Biodiversity in Edition. It's, uh, I'm uh, delighted to have with us um, three guests. Um, and of course, I'm delighted to be to do this again with Jan and Sylvain. And today we are going to write a Wikipedia article about a female botanist. And this is this week, uh, a hackathon is happening in the Botanical Garden of Meissen in, in Belgium, where, where uh, Martin will just explain a little bit about later. But um, th that was the topic, one of the topics at that hackathon. And we used, uh, I reached out, I was also taking part in that hackathon and uh, I reached out to both Martin and Siobhan and Kat and Kenneth to say, can we use, can we use you, the work you're doing and take one of the hidden women as, as they're being called and write a Wikipedia article and showcase how do you uh, make those female botanists less hidden. So that is what we're going to talk about today. And you, as you, if you're watching us, you can engage with us through the comments uh, in the platform that you're watching this. Um, and now, without further ado, let's start with the introductions. And of course, let me start with with uh, uh, Siovan. No, no, uh, yeah, Siovan. Hi. Excuse me, it's uh, early morning in New Zealand. Hi, I'm Siobhan Lichman. I'm a Wikimedian and I've been participating in the hackathon um, in the Hidden Women project. And then moving up to the screen, a Martin. Can you... Yes, hi, I'm uh, Martin Trekels. I'm working at Massa Botanic Garden as a data scientist, uh, mainly working at uh, data standards and linked open data. And that's where my interest in using uh, linked open data sources like Wikidata for finding uh, people information or other biodiversity related information. And then moving to my other side, this is uh, Kat. Hi, Kat. Hi, <laughs> nice to see you. I'm Kat Thornton. I've been a volunteer editor to Wikidata for many years, and I'm the co-founder with Kenneth of sciencestories.io. Hi, Kenneth. Hey, um, I'm Kenneth Sealsnut. I'm based in the US. Um, I'm the software engineer on the team. Um, Kat and I started this as a, uh, as a passion project and it's grown into um, a lot of different outlets. And so it's, it's awesome to be able to apply the tools that we've built um, for, for this uh, use case. And last but certainly not least, Jan, I'm so glad we can hijack your platform <laughs> well, we should also thank Wikimedia Sweden because they're actually them sponsoring me through a micro grant. So, uh, of course, I'm a member of Wikimedia Sweden and a Wikimedian since a long time, but I also do quite a lot of streaming into pairs. <laughs> it's great. Okay, thank you. And Martin, can I give you a few minutes to tell about the bicycle hackathon that's ongoing? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Andra. So uh, this week, uh, Massa Botanic Garden is organize, organizing a hackathon in the framework of uh, the Bicycle Project. The Bicycle Project is a Horizon 2020 uh, grant from the European Commission. Where, and Bicycle actually is a, an acronym that stands for uh, Biodiversity uh, Community Integrated uh, um, Knowledge Library. The idea in Bicycle is actually that all the big infrastructures that deal with biodiversity data start to interlink with each other and that interfaces between those are uh, improved to make sure that this knowledge library is increasing and better uh, catching biodiversity data. Um, within this uh, hackathon, there were several projects and big uh, infrastructures uh, on biodiversity like GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, and uh, players like Plazi, uh, ENA, the DNA database, are looking to get, uh, and DISCO, the Distributed System of uh, Scientific Collections, are looking for ways to uh, get their knowledge better integrated into each other. So. It, during this hackathon, there are several topics and several very technical topics, but we also introduced one uh, topic which was a bit more free. So we, we took the freedom to see whether this would be a very technical one or less technical one, but uh, something to explore 
how we can increase visibility of women in science through uh, uh, these big infrastructures. And so uh, we started seeing what could be uh, relevant and we saw that, that for men it's easy to be represented uh, into uh, or very well known within the community, but for women this is a bit more difficult. And uh, we started the first day with just looking what could be potential reasons for this. But one of the reasons we found out is that it's not easy to find uh, enough information about these women botanical collectors, women that went into the field to collect uh, plants, for example, uh, to make them visible enough, to make them uh, notable enough. So we were just looking how uh, platforms like Wikidata and Wikipedia can help us to increase the visibility of these women. Especially this is important because uh, some of them are just hidden within uh, collection management systems in institutes or they are hidden in literature somewhere uh, on the internet, but still played an important role uh, in, in biodiversity knowledge. So it's, I think, a very important topic to uh, give those women uh, more visibility on the internet and more visibility in general. So this is a bit in a nutshell what the idea of the hackathon was and how Wikidata and uh, Wikipedia could play a very important role in this. Uh, and within this our biodiversity uh, community, we are definitely looking at these uh, infrastructures because they're infrastructures as well. Uh, to help us uh, finding those people. And if there are any questions related to that, I'm very happy to, to answer those. Thank you, Martin. Uh, yeah, Wikidata, I was, I was also taking part in that, in that task and, and Wikidata already has a lot of information on that. Uh, I, I, uh, I should have actually have shared this, the, the queries we had uh, prepared, but that's not a topic of today. Today we're going to, to run by uh, the steps that, and Chauvin uh, will take the lead and uh, will show us and the world how a uh, how we can create a Wikipedia article on uh, on a f I think it's a female bonded button. Yeah, you, you have yeah. selected one, yeah. right, Chauvin? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all ready to go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have selected a woman called um, Irene Baker. And I got to her. Can I share the screen, Jan? Thank you. I got to her via uh, this. This is um, JSTOR Global Plants. And while we're in the hackathon, um, I can't remember who did it, but someone set up um, a, basically a, a spreadsheet having scraped this um, website with, for all the women that are mentioned in this type of, um, the, you know, all the profiles and as you can see there's not actually there's uh, sufficient information to create a wikidata item but there, there's not much biography information here so the next thing we did and we were working as a team i can't remember whether she was originally in um, wikidata already but we um, expanded the wikidata item giving um, much more information so i'll screen, increase the text so you can see it a bit better um, much more information on, um, for example, her spouse, um, what she actually does, um, her employer, and put in some uh, identifiers which are quite important. So for me, when I look at in, uh, when I'm finding a um, woman botanist, there's several other platforms that I also want to make sure are in the Wikidata item. And the first one, I go check whether she has a BHL creator ID, and that's the Biodiversity Heritage Library, and make sure that's added. And then also, um, if she's not in Binomia Tracker, I go and add her to Binomia Tracker. Even if she doesn't appear to have collected um, that many specimens. So here she is listed as a, a plant collector. So I did put her in Binomia Tracker, and this is a, um, a website that links um, the Wikidata item to the specimens she has collected that appear in GBA, the Global Biodiversity Information um, Facility. And unfortunately, there's only one that I can confirm, but that's not necessarily the extent of her collecting because quite a bit of um, data, biodiversity data, is yet to be put in GBA. But at least people know she's there. 
And then the next thing I do before I attempt to make um, a Wikipedia article is go and try and put her in another Wikipedia article. So she, her item or her article, her Wikipedia article, won't be a um, an orphaned article. So I've you know increased the size of the text. So you can see. So I've put her in um, her husband's uh, Wikipedia article. And then I go and go to my sandbox and I draft up um, a, a, an article, getting, getting it ready to put it into Wikipedia proper. Now, as you can see, I've got an a, a, um, info box on the right hand side and I'm using the um, template info box scientist. And I like putting the info, definitely like putting the info box in if they're not a scientist because you can have um, plant collectors who are uh, I, I don't like to say the word amateur they're unpaid and they can do a significant contribution to science by collecting plants but this info box may not necessarily be appropriate because it's talking about doctoral students and theses and um, you know uh, publications etc so for women botanists who aren't um, in academia, I tend to use just the ordinary person um, info box. But for her, because she is an academic and did teach, um, I have used the info box scientist. Okay, so just to show you, I'm going to show you what edit, um, what the source markup looks like. You can do this in Visual Editor, but I just wanted to show you a couple of templates that I also make sure I add to the article. So as I said, we've got info box scientists, and you don't have to fill in all the um, all the bits of the form, just enough to to make it look appropriate. So I always sorry, include... sorry, could you brief short, short, slightly increase the fonts? Yes, certainly. Is that better? Thank you. Yeah, a lot better. Yeah, yeah. yeah keep reminding me because I always forget. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's the info box scientist where I've put in some of her workplaces. Um, Alma Mater, for example, and what she's known for. And she's known for research into pollination biology. Um, and then I also, when I do the introductory sentence or the lead of the article, I always make sure I add in her maiden name if she hasn't kept it. Basically because that's one of the areas where these women tend to disappear. You may have information, a lot of information, perhaps about their collecting or their work under their married name, but completely lose what half their life or some of their life or what the achievements that they've done prior to getting married. So I like to make sure that both names are, or any name changes are listed in the lead to make it easier for people to find them. And then obviously there's the, the actual body of the article. Um, I do include a specific death date because death dates are really important. I can't put her into, for example, Binomia Tracker and attribute, and attribute who's her um, collecting unless either I've got a death date or I've got an ORCID ID. So the death date I regard as a very important piece of data that I, if I've got it, will always put in a Wikipedia article. And then you can see this template here, this botanist template. And I'm just going to go and take you over to the botanist template here. And what this does, is it links her to the International Plant Names Index. So it shows you the names she's published under when she's um, authored plant names. And it's a very, for botanists, very important piece of information. So again, it's something that I prioritise making sure it's in the article, no matter how um, stubby the article is. I always try and make sure that that particular piece of information, if it exists, is in there. And then finally, we've got the authority control, and that's the markup that will eventually link this particular article once it's published to her Wikidata item. And we'll pull in, and again, these, or these identifiers, or the appropriate identifiers. So I see that as, again, a really important template to add when you're creating an article. So the way I do it, after I've gone into my um, sandbox and I've spent all this time creating it and making sure it looks good, I go back to the link that I've, the red link that I've created, and there was already another Irene Baker in um, Wikipedia, so I've had to um, disambiguate her by calling her Irene Baker Botanist. I click on that, 
Um, it always gives you this warning, which I ignore. Go back to my sandbox, copy the whole lot. Put it in there. I'm just going to show preview just to double check that it looks OK. Yeah, that looks good to me. Again, reference is really important. One of the major problems of getting a lot of these women in Wikipedia proper is because there isn't enough um, coverage and their you know, secondary sources um, published on them, and therefore they're not regarded as notable, being notable for the purposes of Wikipedia. So referencing your article properly is of utmost importance if you don't want your um, article to be, to be deleted. And as you can see, we've got um, a, an obituary. Um, we've got um, more obituaries for a husband, which her work's mentioned, and we've got um, a, an article on ambrosiology, which of course, given my username of Ambrosia Ten, I just adore that term, um, in honour of Herbert and Irene. So that's sufficiently um, sufficient coverage, in my opinion, to make her notable for the purposes of Wikipedia. So once it looks, once you're happy with how it looks, I then publish the page and describing. So I'm going to. Moving um, article from draft space, Wikipedia proper, that's my edit summary, and then publish page. And now she's live on Wikipedia. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that. That's, that was my draft. The next thing I do is I go make sure she's linked to, to Wikidata via Wikipedia. So I just go up, oh, I've increased the size, so I'm not very, there you go. Go into Wikidata and just make sure it's linked there. And that links the Wikidata you might want to incre increase that a bit more. Yeah. Sorry. Of course. Okay, so it's jumped down. Yeah. So what I've done is I've gone into the Wikipedia section and just added um, the Wikipedia article to the Wikidata item so that it links to obviously the item and it will help eventually i'll just refresh it it's now linked you can see there and it will eventually pull in these identifiers into her um article so i'll just refresh that i'm, I'm sometimes there's a lag yeah there's a bit of a lag so um eventually it'll come in under the authority control and then, of course, this one has um, no um, no talk page yet. So I like going in, create source, and making sure that the appropriate wiki projects are there. And I basically cheat by going to another um, article to get the markup. So plants, some of these aren't appropriate. So I'll just copy them over and then delete the ones and edit the ones that aren't appropriate. So for her, her name is, uh, this will be, that's not appropriate. And of course it's a start, it's a, what does Oz say? I think Oz said it was start. So I will classify it as a start and if of course people disagree with me, they can go and um, edit it. Now you could use syntax within the uh, official editor. I didn't know that. But I don't know what that means. I mean, the, uh, you, you, you have the, the, the curly brackets. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, oh, this is just, the, yeah. This is just how I've always done it, to make sure that it's... Oh, nice. Yeah. That's not the official editor. Isn't it? No, this is source code. This is definitely source code. Ah, OK. I just publish that and I just say um, creating, spelling it right, creating new, uh, okay, creating talk pay article via adding wiki projects and then publish. Now, sometimes I've got a trick. If I think it's a borderline notability criteria, and I should actually do it anyway, I'll just edit source again. I add the women in red tag because if, um,
if there's if it's borderline, but I think she's notable enough, and I'm a bit worried that someone might come along and um, nominate the article article for deletion. I like letting the Women of Red project know because there's a lot of editors there who are keen to keep women articles in Wikipedia. So they can come in and assist me in improving. And also they find sources that I don't necessarily find. They've got access to um, institutional um, repository of knowledge, you know, libraries, for example. So these people can come in and give me an assistance and hopefully find more information that can just bump the article over to note over the notability criteria and keep the article. I mean, it's great to let them know that another woman article has been created. But I also use them to um, assist me in improving the article quality. So where are we up to? Uh, I think that's, uh, let me just go back into the article itself, sorry. The only other thing, um, now you see, I've got a tool um, that will eventually, this when it says an article description missing, it will pull that in from Wikidata and then I'll put add. But as I said, there's a bit of a, a lag. The other thing we're missing here is categories. And again, I cheat. I go back to um, another women botanist article. And oh, why is that not? Oh, I'm looking at the talk page, that's why. I do edit source again and scroll down. Eventually getting to the, sorry about making people sick. Um, and again, I copy what's in that article, and I just paste it in here and then edit it. So I edit that. No, I want the source. So I take a little bit issue when you say that you cheat, because this is how we all do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I just feel like, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. I'm just going to have to go back and read it and refresh and see what's happening. It's not going down to the bottom. And not, not only in Wiki, but I, this is also how I learned HTML back in the days. That's better. There we go. So, I mean, that's obviously. And when was she born? Sorry, I'm going to make you a bit sick because I'm going backwards and forwards. 1918 to 1989. American botanist, American worm botanist, and that'll do. Other people come along. Oh, no, she's born in the UK. Oh, that's the thing. She's born in the UK, but she, oh, I'll leave her as American because she spent a lot of her life in America, and I believe she um, became American. But um, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what a wiki's for. If I'm wrong, someone will go and edit it. And then um, categories. There, and um, you can see the authority control has, um, you know, been linked to wiki because we've linked it to Wikidata. It's now live and it gives the authority control and that means there should be if i refresh yeah my tool has come up and said um there's the description of her so i can import that so that's nice and linked and now we have a live wikipedia article all linked in with wiki projects in the talk page with um, authority control linked, categories done, default sort, you name it, it's done. Oh, awesome. Sorry. Oh, we can get back to. If you can stop sharing my screen, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. So while you were writing this uh, this paper, I actually have two questions. One yeah. is, I think you briefly touched upon it, but um, what would you consider the absolute minimum that would vouch for a Wikipedia article? I look for three sources, three good quality sources. So I look for things like books, scientific articles, which deal with her or her work, 
obituaries. Um, and the nice thing is if I'm dealing with a dead person and I try and look for um, women pre-1950, uh, the articles don't have to be current. We're talking about newspaper articles in the 1930s or 1920s. I look for, uh, I go and um, do full text searches in the Internet Archive because sometimes there are things like yearbooks um, that are published books that have a profile on the woman and her teaching is, or her um, botanising. Um, there will be, I also do a full text search in BHL, the Biodiversity Heritage Library, because they're starting to not just have um, academic journals, they're also starting to incorporate in there, or have always incorporated and are uh, becoming more and more common, things like um, botanical society newsletters, which will have obituaries on these women, and um, botanical clubs where, from towns. If you've got a newsletter, that's in BHL, that I regard that as a, a good enough source if it's got an obituary or cover an article on her on her work because it's published, it's edited, it's a good source. So I look for three sources like that before. Um, admittedly, sometimes I even go to two and something else to try and get her in there. But if once she's in, I'm amazed at what people find. People come in and improve articles and they come up with stuff that I've never even thought of looking for uh, that's that's the joy of wiki you know i don't have as much as good as i am at getting access to information i don't know everything and people can come in and help yeah but i my bar tends to be three i do like that you start out in a sandbox and i assume that there you you you, you can even start with a single letter right i'm exaggerating yeah. but uh, yeah no no yeah 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 and that's the sandbox is great because i can um while, while I'm researching, I, I've had the situation before, you know, sometimes I won't use a sandbox, I'll just pull stuff up and then I go out and I forget about it and then I come back and I go, oh, I know I've found a source for that statement and now I can't find it. So uh, I use sandbox as basically a place to collate all the references and then write the article because it, it, it to get her over the notability criteria is your first, first really big hurdle. And sometimes I don't I don't necessarily like putting her in Wikipedia first to do that because even though I know I can, because I worry that, you know, so I'll go away for a cup of tea or um, I get called away by a kid and I haven't finished getting her over the notability criteria. So yeah, it's it's and then you've got the risk of your article being deleted. So that's why I like at least using the sandbox until the point where I'm confident. She's over the notability criteria, I'll put her in. And she's unlikely, I won't say 100%, but I will likely be nominated for deletion. Yeah. Cool. Uh, there is one question. I was just, while you were writing, I was just uh, browsing the Wikipedia and I found a page that is a list of botanists by author abbreviation. And there, the, I, uh, uh, there, I think, I, sh I think I, sh I shared the link in the private, uh, private chat with you yeah i'll have a look should we can we fix that can we fix that link already or I she's already in there is she isn't she i i i all right she might very well be all right thank you yeah, she is and she the is. has gone live yeah yeah so she's already in there yeah, and because i've made her article it's a now instead of a red link a blue link oh, okay and okay. Great. I, I, say that, saying that, that sometimes uh, I have seen that article before and sometimes there are missing people. So because they're not, I'm pretty sure this has been generated from, oh, what's it, uh, the International Plant Names IP, oh gosh, I can't remember the, the acronym, um, the abbreviation rather, um, but the there are occasionally times when I have seen all the names that aren't in that particular uh, website. That they, thank you, Kat, IPNI, if that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that they occasionally miss people. And if that's the case, if it was me and I came across one like that, the first thing I'd do is put her on that list. And the second thing I'd do was email IPNI because that IPNI is really important. It's a really important yeah. database yeah. and a great way to make the women visual. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so IPNI, that's really the, the International Plant Names Index, which is maintained mm. by Q. So every time a plant gets a new name, uh, it also has the authorship of that name. So that's where this abbreviation is coming from, from the person that named that plant. Uh, so that's uh, indeed a very good way to increase the visibility of, of, uh, of them. Because plants are in that database um, and they're, they're, they're quite responsive. Um, so long as you've got the proof to back up what you're saying, of course, they're not going to put it in there just on your own word. But if you give them, you know, like the article or the um, scientific article, basically, that you've come across the name in, then they will add it. And it just means that, again, it's one of, one of the many ways to make sure that these women whose work can be mislaid, shall we say, um, it becomes a bit more visible. So in the other pipelines in the previous editions, we, we usually started with an image. But I'm missing the image here. Uh, well, because she died in 1989, it's likely that we will have copyright issues for any and every image, um, including uh, um, institutions. So one of my wishes would be, I mean, one of the things I have done previously, if they're alive and I know them, I'll go take a photograph of them. I'll knock on their door and go ask for a photo. If I don't know them, I have um, emailed institutions asking for images. Um, it did, you know, whether they're deceased or not, I'll, I'll go. But normally it's to do with the fact that, you know, if they're relatively um, in the recent past, the the images will be under copyright and I'll need to have to get permission. So a lot of the time I'll, I'll email institutions and ask those institutions to themselves upload the image in into Wikipedia rather than them giving it to me because then I have to go through the, the process of getting permission to upload it when it's not my copyright. It's just too hard. I'd rather spend the time teaching someone to actually upload to Commons then go through that process because it's, yeah. it's I, I avoid uploading through that process is too onerous. And so actually in this in the in the bicycle project where it, all the all this hackathon is happening, we the end goal is at the end of this week to come up with some recommendations for these big infrastructures on what they can do uh, to increase, for example, the visibility of women and 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 I'm definitely sure that this is one of the main recommendations mm. that we will give, be giving that these institutions that are really holding the information should try to share them as, as much as possible because they are yeah. actually the source of all the information uh, uh, about these women. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Siobhan, thank you. Great as usual. Okay. But um, now we maybe we want to move over to Kat and Kenny because they, I think they have a really great, great project. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're 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 not using Wikipedia, right? You're directly sourcing on Wikidata. Yeah, that's correct. So may I give you the floor to to talk a bit about science stories? And... Sure. Maybe. Um, how should we divide this up? Maybe. Um, Kenny, do you want to talk about um, the science stories itself? And then maybe I'll talk about uh, what we did for the bicycle hackathon. Sounds great. Yeah. And then as we do like the demo, I can just kind of add some commentary as you're driving. Um, but yeah, so Kat and I started uh, science stories uh, out of a very similar passion for wanting to raise the profile of uh, women in science. Um, both of us um, spent some time at um, Yale University and we felt that with all of the privilege that that campus had, um, there was also a lot of areas where um, the accessibility of very important information was hidden behind, you know, those who had access to the university. And we wanted to open that up to, to the world via the internet and, and create rich, like multimedia powered experiences that any anyone from any age could be able to understand um, what it looks like to view scientific research and the uh, uh, and the, the advancement and the achievement of some of these um, um, trend setting and groundbreaking pioneers in, in the space. So we came up with the idea of science stories um, and using Wikidata as the backbone for powering most of the the information on the 
HTTP page and using that as a, essentially the anchor. We have um, an identifier that uh, links, you know, a very unique um, um, reference to a collection of other data sets. And we can use APIs and semantic web technology to um, pull in that data across um, the various sources that Wikidata links out to and integrates with and, and even parsing through the, the statements um, that um, users and, and contributors and bots generate this um, content so that everyone is, is having a, a piece of uh, contributing to the metadata that's in the web about um, these women. And so, um, yeah, it's awesome to see that this work has um, grown into more domains. Um, we've been working to build um, sign the, the back end that powers sign stories as a um, service that can power um, other data sets that can um, leverage Wikidata in more creative ways um, to not just people, but also other, um, you know, ends of the ends of the um, full picture. So thinking about not just the botanist, but the species that um, the botanists were able to discover, how can we make visualizations that will be a jumping point from if you clicked on this, you could then refer back to the botanist that discovered it and, and that it's named after. And so building more of those bridges uh, throughout the data set is, is a great tool that um, we find that science stories and tools like it are, are able to um, really innovate in this space. So yeah, Kat, I'll let you take it away from there. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll just take us through the um, science story for Irene Baker. So um, as Siobhan showed us, the Wikidata record, the Wikidata item for Irene Baker is the basis for most of the data in science stories. And so based on statements that we find on her item, you'll see a selection of moments. And uh, this is a timeline of key events in Irene Baker's life. So when she was born, some of her important publications that are recorded in Wikidata. Here in the relevant people section, we see that uh, this is her husband and then her co-authors are also listed here. And all of this data is being pulled in from Wikidata. So the fact that Peter Raven has an image on his item in Wikidata allows us to reuse that and show it in uh, the relevant people section of Irene's story. That are significant to Irene Baker's life. Here is uh, her library. So these are publications that she was a contributor to. Here, she was a co-author. And then down on this shelf, uh, this is an article, the article that Siobhan already mentioned about Irene Baker. This is a brand new moment that Kenneth created this week as part of the Bicycle Hackathon. Uh, Bionomia is one of the participants <laughs> in the Bicycle Hackathon. And um, so we have this new moment type where if any item in Wikidata has an uh, external identifier for Bionomia, and I'll take you back to the Wikidata page here, and you can see down at the bottom in the external identifier section, we see the Bionomia ID here. So now that we have this new moment type, if that external ID is on the item, when we create a science story for that person, the Bionomia moment will be included automatically in their story. And this is a really nice um, set of information that Bionomia provides where we can see the specimens that uh, it looks like Irene Baker and her husband and William Haber collected this fuchsia. And um, if we follow this link, it would take us to uh, GBIF, where we can see more about that specimen. Um, and then here is a moment with a list of all of the Wikidata statements, and then here are all of the external identifiers that are currently found on her Wikidata item, as well as references that are used to support statements 
on uh, her Wikidata item. And what will be very exciting is that uh, at some point when we refresh this science story, the Wikipedia article, and here it is, that Siobhan just created is now um, automatically pulled in and is now the first moment in um, Irene Baker's story so that you can get a narrative introduction to her life thanks to the work of Wikipedia editors like Siobhan and Andra and Jan and Martin and everybody here um, and Wikimedians all over the world. So um, something great about science stories is that everyone who is enriching uh, different things from Wikimedia Commons to Wikipedia to Wikidata, um, all of that work can be leveraged uh, through the science story and we can give a more visually appealing, dynamic overview of this scientist's life. And sometime soon when somebody finds a image that is suitable for commons, um, we'll be able to pull that into the story too. And we can all discover <laughs> what Irene Baker looks like. Um, and then a special feature for uh, the bicycle hackathon, um, actually I would probably need to share a different window um, or maybe I'll stop sharing and... Um, I've got uh, a question for you, Kat. Oh, um, yes. I do, in Wikidata, I try and add co-collectors and I do it via the significant person, um, I, a property. So I go significant person, whatever it is, and then I qualify it, so qualify it by adding um, object has role co-collector and I'll do a separate statement for the husband if he is a co-collector because obviously the fact he's a husband doesn't necessarily mean he went out and is actually a botanist or co-collected with her or anything like that so I'll, I'll list the husband if um, husband or partner if they are the co-collector and then I'll then try and find Wikidata items for all their co-collectors so I've got a nice list for two reasons one I think it's really important to try and lessen the issue the issue of hiddenness by connecting women to other people and also it's really important when you're um, in binomia and you're actually attributing specimens it's really helpful to know who they connected with because sometimes you'll only have maybe the last name as a as a as information as to who collected you know you've got the full name of one person but only the last name of another so if you know those two people collected together you can then just say yep that, that's her or that's her and then increase the data on her do you guys use that significant person property and you do okay that's good to hear yeah absolutely and it's actually great that you mention all of those different ways that a single entity could be related to another person um, and we try to optimize our queries around um, assault, attacking this as a problem that not everyone is as thorough as you that will remember to make all of those links, especially the inverse relationship. So yeah, I don't, I'm not good at that. that I'm, yeah, yeah, it's, it's very time consuming. So our queries that run uh, that we where we pull in data, we're not only looking at the the main Wikipedia or Wikidata article. Um, record. We're also finding all of the statements that point back to that um, article or, or uh, reference as well, and oh. even even down to the qualifier level. So we're able to generate, um, you know, both like if if it, using the the relationship example of um, spouse, you know, we can pull in whether someone mentioned that that was their husband or if it was the husband's wife. We could do it the opposite direction and still pull in that same um, relation and then as well as breaking it down where if there are more layers uh, and more um, 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 areas where their, their relationship overlaps we can de denote them differently throughout the application as well uh, oh that's so, great it's so cool to hear that's neat and we're always looking for more creative things to do with that type of data too so including bionomia this was one that we thought of Two days ago, and we said, "Oh, we have to get this in by the end of this hackathon." Have you told David? Have you told David Shorthouse, the guy behind? I don't think so. Oh, he's uh, I put it in the um, reporting document, but because I'm uh, so many time zones away from the 
majority of participants of the bicycle hackathon, um, it might be like a surprise tomorrow during yeah. the yeah. Uh, yeah. reporting out session. Oh, and I so, won't, uh, yeah, I won't ruin it. If people there and it pays attention to it, it'll be great. I just think it's so cool. I love it because, of course, that's I'm I'm a super user and by no means tracker. I adore that platform. It just so much, um, just so, it makes so much sense. And the fact that people are then using that information just makes me so happy. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the final thing to share here is um, big thanks to Kenneth again for making something happen in such a short time period during this hackathon. Um, Kenneth was able to provide a specific view for all of the science stories that were created during the bicycle hackathon. And so um, with all of the look and feel of science stories, you can scroll through the specific stories that were created during the bicycle hackathon so that participants can uh, refer back to this and uh, show off their work and reflect on uh, how many hidden women are now uh, at least somewhat less hidden because of uh, the collaboration through the Bicycle Hackathon. This is a really, really, really nice uh, outcome yeah. of this hackathon. It, it's, yeah, I really exactly. like this, and this is really very visual and a very nice, uh, I would never have expected this actually. So very big thank you from my side. Mm. And especially also with this Bionomia uh, tracker, which is actually a way to attribute uh, the work of these women. So they, they did the collection, they, they, and, and so their name gets hidden somewhere in, in, in the collection, in the image of that collection. And so only by people uh, that are really going to attribute these uh, collected specimens to that person and to an identifier of that person, it's super important because at, at the moment you can stick an identifier on a, on a specimen of that, uh, the person that collected, it becomes automatically more visible. So it's a really nice uh, tool. And yeah. this, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go on. This particular person um, was employed at MISA. And so this was a really fun one to create during the bicycle hackathon. And um, because of the wonderful work of the staff at MISA to support IIIF, the International Image Interoperability Framework, and provide IIIF images for the specimens in the collection, um, we were able to add beautiful, beautiful high resolution images of these specimens that she actually collected and then um, are now held by MISA. Um, Sorry that this isn't loading right now, of course. <laughs> Super. Um, it's live, it's not gonna load. You just know that someone's gonna have a technical problem. In the meantime, we have a question here from Nicholas. Uh, could we integrate documents transcribed in Wikisource if there, if there are any and, and they're old enough? Oh, that's a great question. Um, we don't currently have an integration with Wikisource, but that is something that we could certainly consider for the future. It's a great idea. And then Annie also uh, notes that I never clicked on what links here in Wikidata say until very recently. Might be worth showing for Irene Baker. So we'll, we'll go there after the, this loads for you. These publications? Uh, uh, no, I think she meant something else. I'll see if I can share my screen to show it. Okay. So here's uh, the Wikidata item, and it, I switch to <laughs> to English, so so someone else more than us Swedes understands. We have like this what links here, 
in all the Wiki Media Wiki wikis. And let's see what happens if we click that one. All right. So on Wikidata, already nine incoming links. So that's quite good. A lot of um, articles there. Yes, and those um, show up in the library moment of Irene Baker. Um, and then I'll just share one more time because uh, I'm getting the specimens to load here. Uh, sorry, here. <laughs> uh, I must have shared the wrong window. One more time. Okay, now. <laughs> uh, so because the other version of the story that I was showing was um, from the view specifically for the bicycle hackathon, I think that's why it was taking longer, but this is on science stories itself. And you can see that the uh, images load very fast here. And um, it's wonderful to be able to have this with the deep zoom and pan. Um, you know, you can really get a sense of oh the tape that's... Sorry. I was going to say, the, the thing I like about that is see the labels and handwriting and sometimes for handwriting again really important to see because often you can actually um, attribute um, specimens on the basis of handwriting alone if it's distinctive enough and you're confident and it's in the same area all the data it's just another piece of data that goes into making sure that the attributions are correct so yeah I, I just adore that that's so fabulous just getting samples of handwriting is really important Yeah, it looks great. So wonderful work, Misa, uh, creating these beautiful IIIF images and making them available for us to reuse. So they can go to comments? Uh, I, I think the, the license is uh, CC by uh, SA. So. Yeah. So, a, don't worry, you can go to GBIF and uh, yeah, and the, 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 try and find others in slightly more open institutions. <laughs> I'm feeling mean because Mice is putting on this amazing event and now I'm going being mean about this. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. But one of the ideas of having this triple IF service is to allow people to share these images. So uh, yeah. It's a, it's a kind of endpoint that we have uh, based on 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 our our internal images, and people can incorporate uh, those triple IF manifests into their websites. So uh, mm -hmm. that's one one of the reasons why we did this. Yeah, it's a great thing about Herbaria. They keep swapping and specimens move around. So if, if one institution is slightly more closed than another institution, just go to the other institution and use their content for commons. Say you want to, you know, copy the, the label to have a, a an image of her handwriting in the Wikipedia article. I did look for Irene Baker, but no, there's no none of her specimens are yet in GBIF. And, well only one is and um, the one that's there hasn't been digitized. So yeah. This has been I think a great episode. I mean it never gets bored that when you do that and immediately you go to, I mean, usually when we were writing species pages, the excitement came when we would go back to iNaturalist and like instantaneously after pushing, pushing save, there was the Wikipedia page. And it's not only to iNaturalist, you see more places in the world are reusing content and from Wikidata to Wikipedia, from Wikipedia to Wikidata, from Wikipedia to other directions, science stories, yeah, yeah, it's, it's always exciting. So I think uh, this is a nice, nice time to end. And I would like to thank all for having a, yet again a Wikipedia Weekly on biodiversity and showing again a very nice story about sharing 
stories, data, and images and content. Any last words? Thank you yeah. for having us. Just, just thank you for all the work everyone does. They're all, you guys are all amazing. So are you, Siobhan. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you are really, really amazing as well. So thank you very much. Okay, then. Thank you. I'm looking forward to our next episode, which will pop up sometime soon. Have a nice day.